Good morning. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Steve. It's good to see all of you here on this beautiful winter morning. We are blessed to be able to be in God's house to worship and praise him. We welcome those who are listening on the radio as well and those who are watching online. What a blessing it is that God has, has given to us in this time the, uh, the internet and the radio and all of the ways that we can send his word out into the world. So what a blessing that is. I believe you, Mr. Jonathan, have a couple announcements or so. Good morning. I have two quick announcements. The first one is Senior High Youth Group. Um, this Wednesday, we will meet at Big J's Arcade at 630 instead of here. Um, we'll be buying the pizza and then bring the money. The kids need to bring money to pay for the games. And then my other one is the youth group are selling half pound boxes of mixed chocolates from Fancy Pants Chocolates, downtown Brainerd. Um, They'll be selling them in the narthex this morning, so stop by and grab a box of chocolates. Thanks. How much are the, the, the chocolates? They are $12 a box, sir. You got change? I oh, wait a minute. No, one. There you go. There you go, sir. Excellent. Enjoy. Thank you. I might share. I might not either. You are correct, but I've got chocolate and you don't. Ha. <sighs> The only announcement that I really have this morning is if you notice over in the area where the choir normally sits, there is no choir. Um, our, our attempt to having people come early to practice to, to, to form a choir has uh, run its course, so we're going to take a little bit of time off from that. So in the bulletin where it says that the choir is singing, the choir's not singing, so sing in those places. So we will begin our service by singing our opening hymn. Please stand for the last verse. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, grant you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Praise the Lord, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. All right, time out. We don't know that one. <laughs> Let's go back to the one that we actually know. Praise the Lord, blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. It is well with a man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. He has distributed freely, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever, his horn is excellent, 
in honor. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Have mercy upon us, Christ. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high and on earth peace good will toward man we praise thee we bless thee we worship thee we glorify thee we give thanks to thee for thy great glory O lord god Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, Keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany is taken from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 3 through 9. Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed 
and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. And I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person? which is in him. So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand out of respect to the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing together the Alleluia verse. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the fifth chapter. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, 
not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated as we sing the sermon hymn, Thy Strong Word. strong word did cleave the darkness at thy speaking it was done only later light behaven stand for the last verse. Now and ever, praise 
Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Pretty sure Jesus was a Minnesotan. This is why I can say that. From our gospel reading, he says this, You are the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. How many people have salt on the driveways, on the sidewalks? On Every time you look at the salt on the ground, you should think that I'm supposed to be salt. Yeah, that's supposed to remind us of God's grace that even, even that little bit of salt that's no longer good for putting on your food can be useful. And you and I are useful in God's hand. What a blessing that is to know that we are useful in God's hands. You are the light of the world, Jesus continues. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp or put it under a basket, but put it on a stand. And it gives light to the whole house. I remember when I was in high school, I traveled with my youth director across Lake Michigan in a sailboat. Not the smartest thing ever to do. Um, I'm pretty sure that's where my fear of water and dying came from. That was a wonderful experience out in the middle of Lake Michigan. But the cool thing about it was, as we got out there in the darkness of the night and the stars were all around, you could see where Chicago was, even though you couldn't see the Chicago. You could see where all of the large cities were along the coast, not because you could see them, but because you could see the glow of the city so far off in the distance. It's like coming north on 371, just past the Mississippi River, and you know where Walmart is, right? Because the sky is often filled, especially on cloudy nights, with a glow of Walmart. You are the light of the world, Jesus says. What does that mean? It, it's like those glowing cities in the middle of Lake Michigan. We knew if we wanted to get someplace safe, we aimed towards those cities. We knew where safety was. We knew where people were. We could tell where home was. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives lights to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. You are the light of the world. What does that mean? How can I be the light of the world? You could be like the glowing cities in the middle of Lake Michigan. You can be that beacon of hope in the midst of the darkness of this world. But if we try and shine our own light, uh, we're not going to have a whole lot to shine. I always said I wanted to write a book, and the book I wanted to write was entitled, Are You Mooning Your Friends? Yeah, I thought that would be the good title of a book. Are You Mooning Your Friends? And the thought behind the title was this. How much light does the moon have of its own? Zero. All by itself, the moon does not shine its own light. It doesn't matter how often you look, every time you see the moon, you actually see the light reflecting the sun. The sun's light reflecting off the moon. That's what we see when we have the full moon. 
The moon is very bright, but not of its own light. Its light is of the sun. We are the light of the world. We are to reflect the true light. Jesus, the light of the world, the light who has come into the world, our joy, our gift from God is to be reflectors of God's light. So the question is, are you mooning your friends? Are you reflecting God's light into the world around you, or are you more like an eclipse? Are you there in the way so, so God's light can't be seen? Sometimes, unfortunately, we are. Sometimes we like to take the center of attention and we think it's all about us. And we do our stuff because we like doing those things. Even if it is not the things that give God glory. Sometimes we stand in the way. Sometimes we just don't do anything. Sometimes, like the moon, we're not in the way and we're not fully radiant, filled with the God's light reflecting off of us. We just are dark. You know those nights when it's beautiful starlit night, but it's still very dark because there's no moon? Those are those times when we just, we just are. We're not opposed to God, but we're also not in favor of God. We're not standing as an eclipse in front of God so that people look at us. We're just off to the side, just, just being, just living life every day, but not as a reflection of God's love or grace. Doing good stuff and bad stuff, doing the stuff we should do or we think we should do but not reflecting God's love Jesus continued do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them for truly I say to you until heaven and earth pass away not an iota not a dot will pass from the law until it is accomplished Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same is called the least in the kingdom of heaven. There's the eclipse, right? Relaxing the laws of God and then saying and teaching others to do the same. It's fine. Although God tells us this is wrong, we in our sinful nature say, well, I think it's okay, and everybody else is doing it, so therefore, it's okay. It's okay to, to talk back to your parents. It's okay to take things when people aren't looking. It's okay to hurt other people. It's okay to break the laws, especially God's laws, if they don't accomplish for me what I want. So if you have your, your hymnal, I invite you to open to the front of the hymnal to page 321. And if there are no hymnals available, you can turn in the Bible to page 1054. So in the hymnal, page 321, Luther's small catechism, or in the Bible on the back, 1,054. The Ten Commandments. Often we read through them in church as part of our confession and absolution. But I thought again today it would be nice to just read through those if we're supposed to be reminded that we are supposed to, by God's command, do these things and we're not supposed to relax these things so that others will do what is opposing to God, we should probably be reminded of what those things are. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods. 
What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Think about that. Fear, love, and trust in God above all things. When I talk with young couples as they're preparing for marriage, one of the things well, I will often do in one of our first visits is I will ask them, what's the first commandment? It's kind of fun to see how many people know what the first commandment is. It's also kind of frustrating to see that they're struggling to figure out what the first commandment is. I know it's about probably going to church, right? No, no, it's not the going to church one. Uh, and not killing. You shouldn't kill, right? You shouldn't kill. That would be, no, that's a good one. Yep, that's one of the ten. Congratulations. But no, um, what is the first commandment? And so after we discuss it, I remind them that the reason I'm asking is because if you could keep this one right, all the others would fall in line. You wouldn't have as big a problem with the other nine if you could completely and faithfully keep the first commandment. Right? Because if you truly feared and loved God above all things and trusted in him above all things, you're not going to do the other nine. Are you going to misuse his name? No. Are you going to remember the Sabbath day? Yeah. In fact, you're not going to have to remember the Sabbath day. It's going to be an exciting thing that you want to come and worship and praise God because he is the Lord of my life. He is the one I trust above all things. I want to be worshiping him. Honoring your father and your mother. Would that one fall into that one? If we would have God as God and Lord of our life, would we have to follow our mom and dad? Honor them? Yeah. Why? Moms and dads are earthly representations to what our Heavenly Father is in our life. And sometimes our parents are, well, they're sinners, so they are not good reflections of who God is at times. Why do we honor them? Because God tells us to. That we learn to honor and forgive even in those difficult times. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. That one's good, right? I like doing that. Yeah, I love that good, juicy gossip. Don't call it gossip. You know what it is? It's I'm asking for a prayer request. Oh, yeah. Oh, tell me something about so-and-so. Oh, yeah, it's, it's just for the purpose of praying for them. Really, it's maybe, but often, I just want the dirt. Right? That's our sinful nature. If I have a little dirt on you, that means I can, well, I can hold on to that until the time it benefits me to bring that out. Oh, so you had an affair when you were younger. Oh, okay, I won't tell nobody until I have to, till it benefits me. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that, but, but no. How does that fall under that first commandment? If I have no other gods, if God is the God of my life, the person that I am treating that way as a, a means to my ends, that person is loved by God. That person is created in the image of God. How should I treat them? With that same love and honor that I treat God with. With that same love and honor that I should treat my parents with. With that same love and honor Do not give false testimony against your neighbor. 
You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. That one's always fun to teach in confirmation class. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. None of my confirmation students have yet to have a wife. Between 6th and 8th grade, they probably shouldn't. So that's not applying to them. Or his manservant or maidservant. Uh, I have to remind the confirmation students sometimes that manservant and maidservant does not mean mom or dad. Most of our kids don't understand the the meaning of manservant or maidservant. My best, my favorite, his ox or his donkey. I still have yet to have a confirmation student who has had an ox or a donkey. We've had cows, we've had sheep, we've had pigs, but no ox and no donkeys yet. So my kids, the kids always want to say, well, that means pets. Well, that's a good idea, um, but ox and donkey was, were actually tools that were used. They were the driving force. So it was more than just somebody's nice pet who, who sits on their lap when they're watching Netflix movies. It's the thing that they use to do their job, their ox and their donkey. So how does this one apply to confirmation students or, for that matter, us? Well, look at the very last line. Or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Don't covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Be, be thankful for God, to God for what you have, what he has given to you, because he has given it to you for a specific purpose. Again, how does that fall under that first commandment? You shall have no other gods. Well, if I don't think God's giving me what I deserve, so I'm looking at other people's stuff because I should have their stuff, their bank account's bigger, their job is better, they're more popular, they're... They've become the idol. Their stuff has become the idol, and that supersedes God and we have placed them in that position above God. If we could keep the first commandment and then help others to do the same. What a blessing that would be. If we if we would be the light of the world, if we would shine God's light little or large, if we would reflect God like the moon reflects the sun, if we would be that, and I know by our own reason or strength, we cannot do it all by ourselves. We can't. But by God's grace, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can reflect. We can We can be what God has called us to be. We can be the light of the world. We can be that city on a hill that shines so that others could see there is hope. The world in which we live is filled with darkness, a lot of darkness. And these commandments, there are so many people who are hurting because they have broken these commandments. And they've hurt others in their lives because they have not followed God. That's why we come here every week. To be reminded, one, that we're sinners. Because often we think, you know, I'm doing good. It's easy to be caught up in the I'm doing good of life. We come here to be reminded that we might be doing good, but we are not very good at being very good. But we're also come here not only to be reminded that we're sinners, but more importantly that Jesus has come. 
He has brought forgiveness. He has made us new through his death and his resurrection. He has brought us new life. We've come here to be encouraged, to be reminded of his love and his grace that we know when we look at all of our failings and all of the times that we don't complete the commandments, when we don't follow those commandments, Jesus has come to forgive our sins, to take upon himself the punishment that our sin incurs. He came and suffered and died and rose again to bring us life. My prayer for us is this, that this week we would, we would take some time to look at ourselves to see ourselves in our sinful condition, to look at Jesus and see ourselves as forgiven, and then to say to myself, am I reflecting God's love? Am I just in the dark? Or am I in eclipse? Am I standing in the way? My prayer is that we spend time thinking through the power of God, through the Holy Spirit, that our, our, we would be open to see ourselves as he sees us and to be useful in his kingdom. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son to be our Savior. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be reflectors of your love. Teach us, Lord, to to act truly in love as you have loved us. Teach us, Lord, to reflect into the lives of those around us. So many, so many lives that are dark and hurting and lost and afraid. Lord, you are the light of the world. And teach us to be your reflectors. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated as we collect our offerings.
We sing together the offertory. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you delight to loose the bonds of wickedness and undo the straps of the heavy yoke that freed from sin and bondage, we may gladly receive your blessings. Preserve us from the lie that you are a cruel oppressor and give us thankful hearts to rejoice that you are the giver of all good gifts, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Pray, Lord, that you would be with all who are hospitalized, who have immediate health concerns, both physical, emotional, and mental. We pray that you would be with Taya, Rick, Clayton, Eve, Patty, Carl, Martin, George, Don, Bob, Kay, Carol, Cordelia, Steve, Billy, Chester, John, Derek, Russell, Cindy, Casey, Oakley, Jonathan, Liz, Henry, Zachary, Rudy, all who are suffering with cancer and for all that are, we carry in our hearts. Lord, you know their needs. Remind us that you are God alone, that we should have no other gods but you. Teach us to trust and hope in you above all things, Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with John, Elijah, Chris, Matt, Xavier, and Barb as they celebrate birthdays this week. Remind us all that every day is a gift from you, Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with President Biden and Governor Walls and all of the elected officials of our nation. We pray that you would keep them safe and that you would use them for the purpose for which you have placed them in power. We also pray, Lord, that you would be with our military men and women around the world, our police officers, firefighters, EMTs, all who put themselves in harm's way for the benefit of others. Keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with all who are struggling with depression and anxiety, we pray, Lord, that you would be their God, that they would, would have you as the number one in their life. Help them, Lord, to know that they are created in your image, that you love them above all things, and that you have sent your Son to be their Savior. Lord, the value that we have is not the value we place on ourselves, but the value that you have placed on us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with our school district, all the schools in our community, the teachers, the administrators, the students. Lord, we pray that you would work in them, that they would grow a better nation, that peace would be taught and love would abound. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for all of the communities around us. Now, Lord, we have been called to be witnesses to the ends of the earth, and also to the communities in which we live. Lord, use us to reflect your love into our communities. Help us to bring your love and peace and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray, Lord, that you would bring comfort to all who mourn, 
Today especially we pray for Janelle Larson, whose mother passed away. We pray that you would, would be with the family as they celebrate her life next Saturday. We pray that you would bring peace to all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Holy Spirit, that delivered from the spirit of this world, we may hold fast in faith to what you freely give us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
For those of you who have received the little communion kit, I invite you to open the side that has the wafer and take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And then opening the side with the wine, take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in true faith until life everlasting depart in his joy and his peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We continue as we sing together the Nunc Dominus. Please stand. beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling.
praise and magnify. Holy Spirit, ever living, as the church's very life. Holy Spirit, ever striving through us in a ceaseless strife. Holy Spirit, ever forming in the age of mind of Christ. We praise with endless worship for your gifts of fruits and price. Holy Spirit, ever working through the church's ministry, quickening, strengthening, and absolving, setting captive sinners free. Holy Spirit, ever binding, age to age and soul to soul. In the present, in the heaven, you we worship and extol. 